It's been nearly two decades since people like you and I have been able to book a flight on a supersonic jet. But the return of commercial supersonic aviation may be closer than ever. Boom Supersonic recently said it plans to roll out its XB-1 aircraft on October 7th, with test flights planned for next year. Now the XB-1 is a one-third scale demonstrator for the Overture, which is the aircraft Boom hopes will bring supersonic travel back to commercial aviation. Overture will take you from New York to London in three and a half hours, or San Francisco to Tokyo in six, uh, half the time it takes today, you know, fast enough that a business trip that would take three days uh, could be done in just one. That's Boom CEO Blake Scholl. I had a chance to talk with him about the company and its tech. And the idea is the XB-1 will prove that the technologies that Boom has been working on for the last six years are safe and effective for the Overture. Now, the last commercial supersonic jet was, of course, the Concorde. First commercial supersonic transport has its public debut at Toulouse in southern France. British Airways and Air France were the only airlines to fly Concords. After 27 years in service, they were officially retired in 2003. They were just too expensive to operate. Fast forward to today, Boom is making some pretty big promises. Maybe the biggest? that its aircraft will operate carbon neutral. Overture will be the first airliner that is 100% uh, designed to run on sustainable alternative fuels, uh, whether that's a biofuel or a synthetic fuel that is extracted from carbon that's already in the atmosphere. So how do you build a supersonic aircraft that's totally carbon neutral? Well, Scholl says a big part of that is efficiency. Boom is building its aircraft with an advanced carbon fiber composite Right now, most planes are at least partly made up of aluminum. This is a huge deal for aircraft in general, but specifically for supersonics, because carbon fiber stands up better to the high temperatures of supersonic flight and allows you to build a strong, lightweight structure that can be formed in a very precise shape. Supersonic aircraft don't want to be a tube with wings the way subsonic aircraft are. And it's not just what they're using to build the jets, it's how they're doing it. Back when the Concorde was designed, every iteration had to be physically tested in a wind tunnel. Today, a big chunk of the testing can be simulated using a sort of virtual wind tunnel. Concorde had about a dozen iterations of wind tunnel testing before it was time to call it good enough and go fly the airplane. And XB-1 has gone through thousands of iterations of virtual wind tunnel testing. And that's allowed us to achieve a more optimized design that basically means more lift for uh, less drag which means better fuel efficiency, which means more range for the aircraft, better sustainability, lower emissions. Okay, but what about that sonic boom? One of the big concerns with commercial supersonic flight is that noise that comes along with it. Well, Scholl says the Overture will only fly routes that are primarily over the water. So think New York to London, Tokyo to Los Angeles. There are hundreds of these routes around the planet where um, you can fly them mostly over water, create your sonic boom where there's no one there to hear it, and then you slow down over land, and you are about 95% of the speed of sound over land, so you're still faster than what's flying today, but you're really high speed over water, and the whole sonic boom issue is just, it's, uh, it's moot. And the Concorde was also known for being incredibly loud during takeoff and landing. Sol says boom jets won't be any louder than today's modern long-haul jets as they'll be using essentially the same type of turbofan engines. Speaking of the engines, on the day of my interview with Scholl, Boom announced that it's been working with Rolls-Royce to develop the Overture's propulsion systems. Boom says this is the perfect company for the job. They're the only company today amongst the big engine manufacturers that has history of doing supersonic commercial engines. Uh, they built the Olympus 593, which is what powered Concorde uh, in the 1970s. Okay, what about safety, regulations, all that red tape that comes with launching a new commercial airliner? Well, Scholl says that's not a problem for Boom, as they're essentially only using technologies that have already been proven to be safe and accepted by regulators. The carbon fiber composites we're talking about now were pioneered by Boeing on the 787. The turbofan engines are the same that power large subsonic aircraft today with basically an adapter system that lets them go supersonic. You know, avionics and fly-by-wire flight controls, like every single key technology is already safely carrying millions of passengers. So the big question I'm sure you're wondering, what is a ticket on the Overture actually gonna cost? 
Well, Scholl says it's gonna cost about the same as today's business class flights. Where literally you're paying a surcharge for a flying bed because the flight's so long you wanna sleep on it. And instead you get to trade that bed in for a really comfortable, nice seat. And you get to have a real bed at your destination. Boom says the Overture will seat between 55 to 75 people with an all business class interior, nobody stuck in the middle seat. Passenger flights are expected to begin sometime around 2030. And let's be clear here, major airlines are ready to get back into the supersonic travel game. At a cost of about $200 million per aircraft, Boom has already secured about $6 billion in sales from carriers like Japan Airlines and the Virgin Group. Of course, Boom isn't the only one working on supersonic travel for the masses. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Airbus all have projects in development. Okay, so this clearly has the potential to become a really crowded space really quickly. I, for one, am super excited to see what the XB1 looks like when it's ready to take that maiden voyage. But I wanna know what you think. Is getting here to your destination half the time, is that worth the price of a business class ticket? Let us know. Comments below.